All right, now let's talk about the pathophysiology of hypertension. The pathophysiology pretty much says, why does hypertension happen? This is the, this is the why portion. Now we can classify hypertension into two main categories. That's gonna be primary hypertension, and then we've also got secondary hypertension. Now for primary hypertension, there's gonna be no identifiable cause of the high blood pressure. Instead, it's gonna be inherent to the individual. Now on the other hand, in secondary hypertension, the high blood pressure is due to another cause. So once you treat that other cause, the blood pressure will resolve on its own. So now let's focus more uh, about these two different uh, categories. So let's first talk about primary hypertension. And now I've heard up to 95% of all cases of hypertension occur by primary hypertension reasons. Now, I wish I could tell you right now why primary hypertension occurs. But then if I could do that, I'd win all sorts of awards and prizes. Um, it's not a black and white issue, but rather a very gray topic area. There are many different proposed mechanisms for why hypertension occurs. And these include increased sympathetic outflow, uh, uh, obesity, uh, environmental factors, such as uh, malnutrition, infection, a poor diet. Then also we've got the, uh, the RAS pathway, the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system pathway. Um, also we know age affects the blood pressure. So as we age, our blood pressure tends to increase. As we age, our blood pressure increases. And this is due to blood vessels losing their elasticity or blood vessels stiffening. Now, I'd like to think of this in terms of everyday objects. Would you rather try and blow up a balloon or a plastic water bottle? Now, as you age, your blood vessels lose their elasticity and thus turn into more stiffer water bottles. So, it gets harder to breathe or blow them up, so your heart kind of has to work harder. So, would your heart rather pump into a balloon or a stiff water bottle? Well, of course, I'd rather pump into a balloon because that's nice and elastic. However, as you age, your blood vessels turn into those stiff water bottles um, and your pump thus has to work harder and then your blood pressure will increase. Now, also we know genetics plays into, uh, into the picture here. Black individuals and uh, patients who have familial or inherited uh, hypertension, there is a genetic component to hypertension. Um, so, so take a look at all this. There are a lot of different proposed mechanisms here. Um, all of them may hold true uh, they may differ from person to person. Um, since there are many different factors that play into hypertension, we'll see how treating hypertension and managing the high blood pressure isn't really a cut and dry process, but it's really gonna be a trial and error process. So for primary hypertension, we have many different, uh, many different proposed mechanisms. There's really no one that's gonna be the best answer here um, because each individual is different. However, the high blood pressure is not due to other causes. So for my shorthand, primary hypertension is not gonna be due to other causes. However, now let's contrast that to secondary hypertension. So secondary hypertension is a high blood pressure which is gonna be due to other factors. My favorite example of Secondary hypertension is going to be the result of a pheochromocytoma. A pheochromocytoma. Now, this is simply a tumor that's going to release catecholamines, and the catecholamines will increase your blood pressure. So, if you cut out this pheochromocytoma tumor, the catecholamine productions will decrease, and then thus your blood pressure decreases. So there's a direct cause and effect. Because the, of the pheochromocytoma, the blood pressure elevated. Now this is gonna be different than that primary hypertension which we just covered, uh, in which the blood pressure is inherently elevated since there's no identifiable source um, that is extrinsically causing the hypertension. Instead, it's just gonna be inherently high. So now, my pheoch 
Chromocytoma example is just one cause of secondary hypertension. Uh, there are many different causes which can include substances um, like NSAIDs, um, birth control pills, uh, antidepressants, stimulants like cocaine, uh, caffeine can even cause it, um, alcohol. These are just listing a few main ones, uh, some of the bigger ones. Kidney failure. So let's talk about kidney disease really quick as a cause of secondary hypertension. Now the kidneys play an important role in regulating blood pressure. Now they control fluid volume. This is the obvious one. If you're overhydrated, you have a lot of uh, a lot of liquid or a lot of liquid in your blood vessels which can increase your blood pressure so your kidneys try and get rid of that excess fluid peeing it out will decrease your blood pressure however that also is involved in sodium uh, regulation so your kidneys excrete and absorb sodium levels and it also uh, has hormonal factors so hormones so hormonal regulation, such as angio the angiotensin system, which uh, I'll cover here in just a little bit. Now your angiotensin is going to cause vasoconstriction of your blood vessels meeting. It's going to squeeze those blood vessels. And when you squeeze those blood vessels, you're going to have an increased blood pressure. So your kidneys play an important role here. Also. hyperaldosteronism. Now, this is simply a mineral corticoid excess. Now, aldosterone, aldosterone here, is going to be made in the adrenal gland, and it's going to act upon the kidneys to regulate blood pressure and electrolyte balance. Now, patients typically have a triad of hypertension, hypokalemia, meaning hypo or below uh, normal levels of potassium, and then metabolic acidosis. So hyperaldosteronism can cause hypertension. Uh, there's also sleep apnea, um, where the sleep cycle, you have periods of no breathing for greater than 10 seconds, and this can cause your blood pressure to increase. Um, and then also we can take a look and see that Cushing syndrome. And this is going to be uh, an excess of cortisol, so high cortisol levels. Now, there's lots of different causes to this, such as exogenous glucocorticoid use. Um, let's say a tumor or growth in the body is going to produce adrenocorticotropic hormone, which will eventually stimulate more cortisol release. Um, so you can see here that there are multiple different causes of identical sources of, um, uh, that are going to be causing the hypertension. Clinically, once you treat these different causes, the blood pressure will decrease. So you don't need to just treat the blood pressure. You need to figure out why things are happening in secondary hypertension. If you can't figure out why the blood pressure is high, then it may be due to primary hypertension.